Hi, this is Peter Kanantini at Medievalist.net, and we are here at Boston College at the Haskins Conference, and we are joined by William North of Carleton College, and he is the editor of the Haskins Journal. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Well, first, can you tell us a little bit about the, the journal that you, you're editing? Sure. The Haskins Journal is entering its 22nd uh, year of publication, and it's published by Boydell and Brewer. We're an annual journal, and we publish between I would say 10 to maybe 13 contributions a year. Um, we solicit contributions from all of our conferences, this one, but also we host sessions at Leeds, um, Kalamazoo, and uh, at AHA and Medieval Academy. And all, all people are encouraged to submit to our journal. In terms of the kinds of journal, uh, articles we publish, we publish really quite broadly, um, but we focus on the Central Middle Ages, uh, but going back into the Anglo-Saxon period, we have a concentration in Anglo-Saxon England, Anglo-Norman Anglo England, Northern France, Southern Italy, where the Normans go, um, but we also do intellectual history, we do literary studies, and we're moving much more into art history and archaeology. For example, we had Herbert Kessler uh, as one of our featured speakers, and his um, talk will be part of the next journal. Oh, that's interesting. The, uh, in terms of uh, being an editor, it's, it's quite a, a, a challenge of him being able to find the articles, edit them, right. getting everything to public, publication. Like Running a journal, an academic journal, has its own difficulties. Could you talk sure. about like, how, how you work about it? Um, well, I became editor about two years ago. I was associate editor uh, the year before that with Stephen Murillo, and really, um, I think Stephen helped me a lot in the transition. He had been editor and had really done a massive amount uh, for the journal in getting us up to date. So currently, we are up to date uh, in our volumes. And I think, um, on the one hand, soliciting uh, contributions has been relatively easy. Um, I have regular uh, contributions submitted to me, people make inquiries, but also members of the society will both submit to the journal or talk to people that they meet and say, you should really, you know, our journal would be a good place for this publication. Um, and so the submissions have been pretty regular, that hasn't been a and then I think uh, finding appropriate reviewers for articles, um, meeting their schedules uh, so that they have time to review the piece, getting back in touch with authors, allowing them time. So it's, it's something where um, I've had to develop a spreadsheet just to make sure that I have all the pieces um, before my eyes and, and I drop balls and then my own sort of integrating this job with my own teaching work at the college can be complicated at sometimes because the crunch times for the journal sometimes correspond to the crunch times in teaching and other things. It sounds like the time management is a kind of a key. Time management is key, um, but I think one of the upsides, the compensation is just the way in which editing the journal has broadened my sense of my own field. Um, I have gotten pieces where uh, go immediately into a class I'm teaching and talk about this recent submission that you know, is coming out in the journal. And so that's very exciting. It gives you a sense of current work. And the contributors have all been just fabulous to work with. Um, copy editing is something that is both fun and, um, well, um, you get tired of looking at a computer screen uh, at the end of it. But uh, overall, it's a, it's a good job. Would you offer any advice for uh, people who are considering uh, submitting an article? What makes a good article? Like, What makes it something uh, that would say, this is something we have to have? Well, I think um, the articles that I have really felt that way strongly and that we've gotten very positive reviews back almost immediately are articles that have a clear argument that they're trying to make. And they are well-framed and well-documented. Oftentimes, um, well, not oftentimes, but sometimes we'll get articles with very interesting ideas, but sort of 
little documentation for those, and those tend to take a lot longer to work through uh, a process. And so I think the more clearly um, you define your argument and really make sure that all the, the P's and Q's are, are dotted, and P's and Q's are dotted. Hmm. Um, um, but, you know, just making sure that you've really um, argued your point well, provided the supporting documentation, um, and frame. Uh, I would say um, don't try and write two articles in one article. That's, that's often another thing that has come up where um, projects need to be split. But in general, I would say um, if you have a piece that you're interested in, um, the best way of, of getting a sense of topic would be just to contact me because we have had pieces that go as late as the late 13th century. Um, and so think of us as a possible uh, venue for your publication and, and just check in with me. If uh, someone wants to, okay, if anyone wants to subscribe or submit an article, how would they should contact? Uh, um, I'm easily reached at Carleton College in the History Department, uh, wnorth at carleton.edu, and I check my email all the time. Um, and you can subscribe to the journal directly through Boydell and Brewer, or you can become a member of the Haskin Society, and as part of that membership, you will, will receive uh, each year's volume of the Haskin Society Journal. Well, thank you very much. Thank you.